morning. Uh, yeah, I know. I look a wreck. It needs to be ironed or thrown out. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, whatever. It's cold today. Um, and I think I've got a cold, so if I start coughing my lungs up or whatever, um, take no notes. Right, so I got a lot of stuff this morning. Look at that. Nonsense. Well, it's not nonsense. Well, depends on what you think I have. Hello, you help me? Huh? You gonna help me do the video? Oh, yeah. Hmm? A good kiss? A good kiss? Good kiss, good kiss, kiss. Hmm? Squish, squish, squish. Oh, it's, uh, it's definitely no kiss. Okay. All right. <coughs> Let's see, it's gonna start. Right. So, um, the thing was Michael, right? Michael. Um. Uh, the, when I got the message about like angels are everywhere, um, it's in my other video. Uh, angels are everywhere. Um, I mean everywhere now, like more so than ever. Uh, you know, it's, it, it almost felt like every second person you meet out there is going to be an angel. I mean, that's how strong it is. And then I was asking him this morning, you go, what does that really mean? What, what are they, you know, why are they here? And they said, well, we're here to help you, to give you hope and, and to help you, um, basically fight your demons, you know, to, to recognize your demons. I mean, you know, your your darker side or whatever, to recognize it, um, acknowledge it, uh, figure it out, and basically surrender it, you know, just surrender it. And they're here to help us to see very, very clearly what that is, you know. I mean, it could be as simple as ego or uh, greed or anger or whatever. So um, I was like, yeah, okay, all right. Um, and uh, and then the the obviously I said I had the dream about him and he was riding on a white horse, you know, like and he waved and he was wearing blue, like a very blue shiny suit, um, which is healing as well. But um, but he saluted like a like a soldier would, you know. He's like, yeah, he's the he's the warrior. He's coming in to sort it out and that. Um, and uh, and the geese flying was uh, you know like. Like there was thousands of geese, but it was, it did look like a painting, like a Michelangelo <laughs> painting. Um, I think that's what he was trying to show me. Um, and, you know, geese flock together, they're, uh, they, um, and they go home, whatever that home is for that time of the year. Um, so this was all over three days and it was like really, really strong and I couldn't get it out of my head. It was like, yeah, okay, all right. Um, What's, what's, there's something else in there, right? And then last night, I had this very strong urge to watch Michael, the film, um, with John Travolta in it. So I watched it and I was like, yeah, I love that film. I just, I love how he, he, um, does all that. But, um, it, all kinds of, um, things start popping into my head about the film afterwards, like, um, uh, you know, he uses a lot of metaphors in there, uh, like the sugar thing, you know, and he says, don't believe that they, um, they tell you it's wrong, right? And I was thinking, well, sugar is everything sweet, everything lovely, everything, everything that we're here to enjoy. And, you know, like they say, you know, sex is wrong. Sex out of marriage is wrong. Um, having a drink a glass of wine, you know, uh, whatever it is that makes you happy, whatever it is that that uh, brings sweetness into your life or a lovely thing, you know, then um, it was kind of like that. And then, and then I thought, you know, it's actually like the, I know I'm a bit slow. I mean, I've seen it a couple of times, but um, I'm a bit slow. It was kind of like The Wizard of Oz. You got Dorothy and the dog. Um, at the end, he says, let's go home, you know. Um, you've got the guy who's needs a, a new heart, basically, you know, the tin man. And then the other guy, um, his fear, he's afraid of his wife telling her that she can't have more money for stuff because she, she might leave him. So, um, 
And and then in the beginning, when you see him uh, smashing down the bank, which is greed, um, the woman that he lives with at the time says, and they say, well, didn't they notice it, you know? Um, uh, like and, and also a little thing, like, we don't need another car park, you know? Um, it's kind of like to that song, you know, that song... Um, uh, what's that yellow taxi one, you know, about the leave us the birds and the bees, you know. Um, but she says, oh yeah, they, they wouldn't notice in the town, they said it was a tornado, which is, you know, again, Wizard of Oz. Um, and then the guy almost gets his heart back when he realises the dog's life, um, which is God, dog, God, you know, the dog's life, the, his... His existence is more important than his own existence, you know, um, and gets Michael to save his life, you know, and it's kind of like saving his own life. Um, his heart opened up and he cared about somebody more than he, himself. Um, everything in that, you know, the pie, the, uh, the, the bull even in the beginning when he fights the bull, you think that the bull represents everything that's uh, anger, war. You know, and he fights that, which is what he came to battle, and he, the war, you know. <coughs> um, so, uh, so it was all of that, you know, and I, was, I went through all of that in my head, and I'm like, yeah, okay, all right, you know, that's great, you know, I, I see it now, that uh, it's all about um, fighting, you know, finding your heart, fighting your fears, um, and, and coming home. Coming home to yourself, coming home to source, coming home to love, you know, that's what it's all about. Um, so, sorry, I'm looking down at my notes here because there's just so many of them. So I was saying, well, what does what's that mean? So, oh, and then in the film, right, um, which I had totally forgotten about. I forgot about the whole, the whole film, really. It was, it was lots of bits that I totally just forgot about. Um, he's sitting on the bench with the dog and he's talking about saving the guy's heart. You know, making him love again, open up his heart again. And he was going, that's one of the hardest things to do. Um, and he's sitting there and he looks up at the sky because he knows his time on Earth is like getting shorter. And he looks up at the sky and three geese fly by. <laughs> I get my dream. You know, the, the geese are linked to Michael. So um, that was just a little confirmation. Um, and it's almost like, um, you know, geese are moving to a better area, a warmer area, you know, when they go, when they um, migrate, they, uh, they're going to a, a nice place where there's food and uh, comfort during the winter. So it was kind of like saying, yeah, yeah, you're all ready to fly, you know, hold on. I hear footsteps. Okay. Um, yeah, so the little, I, I can't remember what I was talking about, so the little dog, yeah, Sparky, Spark, Spark of Light, which is us, you know, um, uh, and that's basically, you know, who Michael helps in the end, who brings back to life, you know, it opens up the heart, and, and, and it's kind of shown that Michael kind of has to open up his heart, I mean, he gives his life pretty much for, uh, to save the little dog because then it kind of uses up his time because his feathers all start falling out. So, um, yeah, there's a lot there to see, a lot there to think about. And um, even the pie, um, the pie is like representative of humanity. It was all different kinds, different types, different shapes, different flavors. Um, and somebody goes, oh, I like blueberry ones and I like this one and I like banana and all that. But Michael says, no, I love them all. You know, so it's, um, he's just saying, you know, if we could only just all get there, open up our hearts and, and enjoy life together without the fighting and the, you know, the wars and stuff. Um, so then today, right, I, um, I'm sitting there and I'm writing all this down, I'm writing down what I, I saw in the film and, um, and at 10, 10, I looked at the clock, 10.10, 10. it went deathly quiet all of a sudden. Even the cats were kind of like, what the hell? You know, I live in the city. Um, there's always sirens, cars going by, people walking past the house, talking, and you can hear them. You hear it all, you know, it's 
very noisy. As you can hear, it went deathly quiet. And suddenly I could hear the bells of the church, which is way up there at the top of the hill, um, which I don't often hear, um, ringing. Like, um, unbelievable. So I thought, quick, get out the recorder and record how quiet it is, you know, um, and the bells. And, I, and then while I recorded, I play it back and you can hear Michael twice being called out on the EVP. Um, I don't know whether you'll hear it. Um, probably not. But it was just so, so deathly quiet. It was very weird. I'll, I'll play it for you. See if you can, um, you might not be able to hear the Michael. It's, uh, where are you going? Deathly quiet. Yeah, okay, this one. I can hear it. It says, you know, the bells, you hear the bells. Did you hear the bells? I don't know. Anyway, there's bells. But it's it's just so quiet. There was not a sound. You know, it's weird because normally, you know, when you when everything shuts down, you even hear a noise in your ears. It's kind of like a, you know, and it wasn't even that. It was, it was just really strange. Now, I was told years and years ago, when you hear, suddenly hear bells ringing out of nowhere or whatever, um, uh, that it's the angels telling you it's time to celebrate. <laughs> so whatever it is, something to celebrate. Um, and it was exactly a ten ten. You know, uh, very odd, very strange. So um, I was asking about ascension. You know the bells thing. Um, that was insane. I don't know whether I wrote about it in the book or whatever, but I used to work for a doctor's surgery. Unbelievable place. Oh, God. Um, horrors of horrors. Uh, but one day I went into one of their offices and I could hear ding dong, ding dong, 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 dong. And I, thought, I looked around and I thought, is this the phone or something, you know? But it was so loud. It was like, good God, how did it get any work done in here? And I thought, I couldn't figure out where the church was. And I, but I didn't know that area too well. So I thought, must be a church, but it, like, it must be just outside the window. It was that loud. Um, and I stayed there for ages, looked out the window, and I thought, I can't see any church. It's very weird. Um, so I came out. <coughs> And uh, I said to one of the, the doctor whose office that was, I said, how do you get any work done with those bells? And she said, what bells? And I went, the bells. I said, didn't you hear them? It, like it was, you know, like wedding bells. And she said, there's no bells. And I said, is there a church around here? And she said, well, up the road, way up the road. I said, no, it's not that one. It wasn't coming in that direction. It was definitely over the other side or in, just in the room. It was just weird. And... Uh, and then it hit me, kind of like, oh, hang on a minute. I said, you wouldn't be getting married, would you? And she went, yeah, I am. I'm planning my wedding now. And I thought, okay, all right, they're just celebrating. And, um, and it was terrifying because she said, are you hearing things? And I was like, no, no, just, you know, it's probably just a, you know, I don't know. God. Um, so so I know when they, they celebrate with the bells, the angels celebrate with the bells. Um, uh I know that's kind of cliched and that, you know, because of the, you know, that film, uh, a wonderful, a wonderful something, you know, where James um, Stewart, you know, has the little bell with uh, his angel. <laughs> um, it's, but they do, they do actually. And it's, and uh, it's random. I mean, I've had it several times where bells have just gone mad from somewhere really loud, you know, and I'm like, where the hell? And it's gone on for like uh, one time. It went on for about two hours. Now, 
no church is going to ring a bell and it was random it was beautiful but it was just kind of random ringing you know um i'm like no nobody no church is going to ring it for two hours you know the neighbors would all start yelling and screaming or whatever but it just so um uh so they yeah celebrate so i was asking him about ascension i was like what what's the best thing and he said best thing is your job because we're here now to help fight the like the collective negative energy that we've created for wars and anger and hate and racism and division and all of that. We're here to help with that. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll help you, so it's a lot easier. Um, he said, all you have to do is battle your own, but we'll help you with that too. You know, everybody has to battle. Know your demons. Know what they are. You know, it's anger, ego, uh, greed, whatever. Know it and, and then surrender it to source. You know, because... Um, our job is to rise above the the human part of us, you know. And it was saying like, matter doesn't matter. That was one of the first messages I ever got. Matter doesn't matter. And it was kind of like, don't worry about you know, oh, I'm sick, you know, uh, why isn't spirit coming in and help me or whatever. It was like when you surrender to source and you allow more of source to come in, you know, more of yourself really come in. Your um, your true self, um, things will change, you know, you'll feel lighter, uh, things will get, will uh, ease up. And I was saying, no matter, and I was like, well, what else can we do? And he said, whatever the hell it takes, you know, whatever it takes to raise your vibration. So if that's um, nature, go to nature, uh, learn to love again, uh, love every little thing that you see on the way to the park, in the park, you know. Um, helping others, uh, helping animals, wh whatever it is that you can do to uh, rise above, to raise your vibration, um, that's ascension. And basically what you'll do is raise it so much, you know, like when you're in nature, you blend with nature, you're blending with the source. It's all source, music, source. Um, and that's, that's what he's saying, we just blend with source and, and allow it to come in and surrender it to source. And then you will, your vibration will raise and, and you'll start to leave this suffering behind. You know, you leave this, this energy behind, you know, the one that keeps us down, which is kind of being in the human body, really, you know, the density of it. Um, I saw a really interesting thing yesterday, or I think it was yesterday, the day before, on, um, Oh, this, this guy, I wrote it down because it was just so important. Um, uh, what is this? It's a guy called uh, John Stewart. John Stewart uh, Weir? Yeah, Reed. Reed. John Stewart Reed. And he did some test with uh, 432 hertz, I think, some tones or whatever. Not sure if it was that exact one, but he did some tones. So he got uh, two files of blood. He put, you know, one in the, in a little, um, looked like a little microwave type box thing. He put that in there with a, uh, with music, just blood that was, you know, taken from someone. <laughs> um, and then another one in another box with nothing. Just closed the door so it was sealed and it's nothing, just silence. And um, when he took the one with silence out it was dead all the cells and um were in a you know they just were dormant and that's it and they were useless um the other ones that were in with the music came alive and in fact there was so many they were, they were, they, you know the blood the cells had been in the dormant state and now they came alive and there were so many of them the machine couldn't even count them you know in the other one it was just yeah nothing you know they're gone um so he was saying about on a cellular level Music, 432 hertz, um, can uh, can heal, can do, or just works on a cellular level, you know, your cells all just come to life and, um, and he was saying, you know, that the, the dark side changed it to uh, 440 hertz, the music should be at 440, which is not good, um, it's just not good energy, 432 is good. <coughs> um, and it was like, it was really important. It was like, yeah, music, music can 
and uh, I, I was thinking, you know, sometimes I listen to music. If I get annoyed about something, um, sometimes it, you know, I can feel it in here in me gut, and it's kind of just, you know, knotted up. And sometimes to get it out, I play music um, that uh, makes me feel very uh, powerful, almost. Powerful in, you know, that I find myself again, find, you know, the the strength. It just feels very, very strong. You know, it's like power songs. When you play them and you go, yeah, you know, like the eye of the tiger or something like that, you know. Uh, for mine, it's drum, drum and bass. Um, uh, when I hear that, it's uh, it it resonates with the what's inside, but it also kind of gets it out. You know, it's kind of like yes. You know, it's like um, there's a uh, there's some TikTok videos of of uh, or YouTube videos of bikers. You know, they're they're beautiful now. They're all slim line and all, and they're taking off and doing wheelies and. Um, and they just have such a camaraderie between them, you know, they're always messing about, you know, switching off each other's things. And then they play this song every time I see it. My heart just jumps out of my chest. Um, it's the it's the sound of silence, but it's the remix. Um, so, it, you know, this goes, and then the sound of silence, and then it's, and then the naked light I saw, or something like that, whatever the words are. Um, and then it goes to the 10,000 people, maybe. But then there's a, a boom, boom, boom comes in, but it's, oh, wow. It's just so powerful. Um, you know, and people might go, oh, well, that's, you know, that's not good. You know, it should be all opera. And, um, you know, and you go, no, no. Sometimes you need to get inside and find out what the hell is going on in here and get it out, you know, in a positive way. And that, for me, is a positive way. It's, um, uh, you know, just watching somebody tearing down a motorway, free, absolutely free, nothing but just, you know, the distance, you know, the path, the journey, and it's just a straight ride all the way along. And then this music plays and you just feel, yes, like the, you're on the motorbike and you're just taking off. I think I was a, a biker in a past life. Um, I wish I'd been one in this life, to be honest, uh, when I see the fun that they're having. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, so music, different types of music even, you know. I mean, uh, opera has always annoyed me for some reason. It's kind of like, ugh, you know, yeah, fine, okay. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. I mean, I get it. I get the whole thing, you know. But I just, no, it's not my my thing. Um, and it's nonsense about, um, you know, your vibrations higher if you like opera and all that. It's not, It's not more refined or anything else like that. It's just... It's uh, it's your choice. It's just a choice. If it resonates with you, that's fine. Um, anybody that I've ever gone into their house and they're playing um, opera or uh, uh, yeah, just opera. Um, I've never really liked the people, <laughs> to be honest. Um, if you go into a person's house and they've got jazz playing, you do tend to like them. Because they're very interesting people, always very interesting. You know, they always got lots of interests going on, or in playing instrument, or you know, they have a real appreciation for music. Um, but yeah, uh, and then I started listening to four thirty two hertz. You know those uh, meditation ones, and it was lovely. It was. It it does resonate. Actually, at the back of my neck was resonating with it. It's throat chakra. Um, so, um, yeah, anything. It's like the thing is, don't don't listen to people who tell you, oh, that's bad, that's bad, you know, you shouldn't do that, or whatever. Whatever gets you to raise your vibration, as long as it's not bad, or, you know, hurting anybody or whatever. But as long as it gets you to raise your vibration. I mean, that can be eating pie, you know, eating a cake, um, going out to the park, you know, sitting in nature, uh, rescuing a little animal or whatever it is that lifts you up, that's the thing, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to have any formula or ritual to it, it's just enjoy life, um, because now it's time to celebrate, because the angels are here, Michael's here, he's here and he's helping and 
and it's all good it's kind of like you know his message is constantly just give them hope give them hope that uh, we're here it's okay we like we we will you know we're raising you up and and all you've got to do to help is to just get rid of your surrender your your uh, any darkness that's within you or any low vibrational you know anger hate jealousy you know those things that keep you tied to anything just let it go cut the strings you know do the golden scissors cut the strings all around you of things that hold you to the past and that and just keep doing that until it's gone you know and eventually you raise your vibration and those things are down here on a lower vibration you're so high it's it it'll be gone you know it'll just fade off into the to the distance and you won't think about it anymore so so that was my um my thing today uh but the bells, yeah, the bells were lovely. It's always good, always good when you hear the bells. So yeah, that's my um, my thoughts today on stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm running, I'm running out of pages. <laughs> it's crazy the amount of stuff that comes through. A lot of it today as well on the radio thing was uh, the source. Uh, the Pleiadian, Michael, mission, you know, hope, have faith, you know, those things. So, um, so it's it's here, it's here. All we have to do is um, go out there and raise our vibration, and uh, all will be good. Become more of yourself by allowing Source to come in, and. Uh, and you do that anyway, I think. When you listen to some beautiful music, you know. Yeah. Oh, there's a thing. Uh, see, that's that's even more proof. There was a... Oh, I don't remember names. I'm not going to remember names. Uh, I know John Donne, who's a, a poet. Uh, a Don, actually. I think he's got a link to it. Um, it's called The Oratory in London. It's a church. And... Um, you know, when all the rest of the churches were, uh, like, uh, reformed, kind of, you know, Puritan kind of, no fancy stuff on the walls or no pictures or, you know, just a pulpit and, and uh, it was very um, strict about that. These guys got together and um, created the oratory. And... God knows where they got the money for because it's uh, incredible what they did. They got like marble from, like if it was St. Patrick, maybe there's a little corner for St. Patrick. Um, you know, incredible artists, like, like names, you know. Uh, it's not Michelangelo, but, you know, um, Say it was Michelangelo. They got a statue from, you know, by Michael, uh, you know, um, Michelangelo from, uh, you know, somewhere that he'd done it. And they shipped that over. They bought it, shipped it over. So the statue is by some great artist. And the marble around that little corner is from Ireland. Literally from Ireland. You know, it's Connemara marble. Um, and then the next one is another saint. And that marble was taken from, we say, I don't know, wherever you get marble from, some other countries. So, you know, incredible colours and oh, it's just beautiful. Everything was beautiful. That uh, There was angels all on the ceiling, you know, and around the, uh, the area up at the top. So when you looked up, all you looked at was angels. The, the organ was all gold, massive, massive organs, all gold and... Everything in this church is beautiful and it's priceless now, you know, when you think about it, the statues are, you know, the paintings were all by famous uh, painters, you know, it's just incredible. When you walk in, you just go, you know, so, and it was to raise you up. It was to give you that feeling like you were raising up to heaven. So when you heard that organ, which is unbelievably huge, um, it was to raise you up to something beautiful, that it was all very beautiful. And down on the earth, where you had the marbles and the stone and all of that, that was all beautiful too. So you were in this little bubble of loveliness and and, um, and that was their aim, 
that uh, aesthetics. You know, the 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 when you go into a place, it's you know, if there's beautiful things, you will you will uh, rise above your your basic law of vibration. You know, that if you were miserable or fed up or whatever, you go into this church, you see all these beautiful things. It it kind of raises you. It's like art. You know. Uh, it raises your vibration when you look at it. Um, so, so yeah, anything, anything that raises your vibration. That's what we should be focusing on now. That's what we should be concentrating on. Enjoying yourself, have fun, um, laugh. You know, watch comedy things. Anything um, that that gets you there, because uh, that's what it's about now. So. Good luck. Go watch a funny film or uh, the park or something, something nice. Or even have some pie. <laughs> yeah. So, good luck today. Have a lovely Sunday. And uh, enjoy. See you later.